Good morning from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Saturday, February 2, 2019, Groundhog Day. Uh, Poxitani Phil didn't see his shadow, so we get our boats in the water early this year. Yeah, that and a coin flip will predict it. Uh, today, Snake Mountain Boat Works is hosting a hands on workshop focused on filler stains versus gelled stains. And we will be experimenting with different colors. Uh, the gelled stains are available from wood coat, but also a very interesting recent entrant into the field is the Lake Oswego Boat Company in the state of Washington. Uh, Mike Mayer, uh, the owner and the chief, you know, it's like any of these small businesses, there isn't anything Mike doesn't do, uh, has followed his love for and his profession of preserving particularly pre-war Chris Crofts uh, and he was always frustrated by the streakiness he got from filler stain, the fact that it over a year subsides into the wood fibers and therefore your original mirror-like uh, finish uh, can become a bit mottled. He said there's got to be a better way. Uh, wood coat is nearby in the Pacific Northwest. Mike got together with wood coat and now has uh, available a line of custom mixed gel stains that exactly match the OEM colors of Garwoods, pre-war Chris, post-war Chris, Centuries, Lyman's. He's got black that you can mix. Well, the workshop is all about why Snake Mountain Boat Works will no longer use a filler stain. We will use only gelled stain. So it's quiet now. In a little while will be filled with folks and we'll be sharing some of that with you. Our goal here is to have R RJ and Joe. R Joe, where are you hiding? Right here. Right here. Joe Davenaugh has joined Snake Mountain Boat Works. He has the unenviable challenge of following John. Uh, Joe brings a decades of precision woodworking to the table, and we're getting him used to the fact that there are no straight lines in boats. Uh, so we're not building windows and doors uh, or furniture. So have a conversation with Joe today. But right now I'd like to hand it over to RJ and Joe and take us through some demonstrations and maybe we can get people to get working. On it. All right, we have some pieces here that yesterday we sanded up and put bleach on half of it, and then half of it is unbleached. So you can see the difference between a piece of bleach wood and one bleach. And also, we have a piece here right here that kind of shows what happens if you don't. Know, Sand with the grain. We have cross grain scratches and stains. One of the issues we've had with the with the filler stain over the years, particularly when we're doing a big boat like a U-22, you start down there and you've got three guys. You're supposed to let it flash. I, I was an economist for more years than I'll admit. Flash sounds like an economist on the one hand and then on the other so the economist can never be wrong, right? Well, it flies to flash. And we started down the side of uh, a customer's U-22 and you'd think three guys could keep up. So Michael, Michael's the applicator. I wonder how I ended up with the brush in my hand. Right? They didn't trust you with the other part. Did no. <laughs> didn't trust me. That's good. I'll remember that in the future so I don't have to scrub. <laughs> they let it begin flashing 
at the transom and started going as fast as they could do. By the time we got to just behind the helm station, it had dried to this yucky, chalk-like mass. Cheesecloth could not touch it. So, of course, RJ and I turned to John. What are we going to do? Right? He goes over and he, he grabs a, a gallon of mineral spirits. We were able to reliquify it. But then we faced the challenge of trying to get a uniform result. Yeah, I mean, that's a 22-foot boat. That is a heck of a long distance. And with this stuff, there is no flash with gel stain. You'll see, one guy, we apply it and immediately begin removing it. And the process involves initially circular motion with your, we use cheesecloth. Some of us use terry cloth and get yelled at, but that's okay. Um, you work it in as you would a filler stain, but not, you'll see, not nearly as long. And then you clean it by going with the grain, because this is not a filler stain, so you actually want to drag that stain out of the, out of the grooves. Is that straight from the can? Yeah. Which is which that they're using? This is the Garwood stain. Okay. And this, this is that coming out of the can? Um, if I mix up the big batch, I can marry. I do. But so the Garwood the, stain the comes out of stain out of. Using? Yeah. Pardon me. This is the gel stain. It's the gel stain. And they apply it first with a paintbrush. <coughs> a rag or a paintbrush. Okay, and, and they are taking out excess right now. They both are taking out excess. And one of the reasons we, we uh, bleached some, only half of some of the boards was that so people could see the difference. And I think for us, the wood that was not bleached actually is more attractive at this point. But you have to understand, that's a single piece of wood, so it's uniform all by itself. If you're, if you're working on the side of a boat, not all of those planks are going to be identical uh, mahogany. Should you bleach the wood? We bleach everything. And we learned the hard way. When you bleach on the side, you start at the boot stripe. Started what? At the boot stripe and work up. Don't start at the top <laughs> and work down or you get these wonderful... It, it's like a, ra a ski racer coming down the side. White, white. Like if you were working with a new boat and it was all new wood, would you still bleach everything? I think I, bleach has another positive as, uh, result is that it opens the grain up to uh, accept to accept uh, stain. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have an opinion? How long do you let the uh, stain dry before you punish it? We don't. You yes, see? It's immediately. Really? So these guys have to be away. said before you varnish. Before you varnish. Oh. Our steps are, particularly now that we're using a non-filler stain, that means we're leaving voids that were otherwise supposedly the filler stain filled. Uh, there's a big negative there. Filler stain contracts over the next 12 to 15 months. No matter what you do with it, no matter how much CPS you have on it, no matter how much varnish you have on it, it shrinks. And if you've seen boats where the, it's still pretty shiny, but it's kind of spidery looking along the grain. With this, you're not trying to fill those. So our approach is to let this stain cure. The cans say eight hours. We let it cure for a week because we've learned that CPS tends to pull the stain. Whether you roll it or use a foamy, it, it pulls the stain and you end up with light and darks. So if we let it really cure, um, what we've begun doing is 
adding a fourth coat of CPES before we begin varnishing and we, we scuff it to get rid of all the hairs after the third coat and come in with the fourth and that CPS is fantastic at filling some of those some of those voids. Um, it's also in our experience there no better uh, primer exists than, for wood than CPS. The, the paint just adheres to it incredibly. We'll put the, the fourth coat of CPS on, let that cure for a good 48 hours, because now you've built up a pretty thick film. And then we'll take 80 grit and by hand and, and, and scuff uh, with the grain, clean it with acetone, and um, then start varnishing. Clear penetrating epoxy sealer. Oh no. <laughs> we buy our supplies from Jamestown. We do not use Total Boat products. No. We've not. Oh, it says total. Oh, it's a bucket. The bucket is. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder because I use Jamestown soda. I use a different. Use a different epoxy sealer. We. Sorry. Jamestown makes a penetrating epoxy too. This was the original, I think. Jamestown has a total boat. Right. He just said he doesn't use it. Um, you guys use Smith. Right. We use Smith. Smith. We we've got several containers of, of total boat penetrating epoxy up there. Anybody who wants them can have it. What, what did you like about it? What, uh, it? what did we? What? Uh, it took was, a long time to dry. We noticed versus the Smiths, and it didn't penetrate like as well as the Smith. Kind of sat on the surface a lot more. I didn't. I didn't personally like it as much as the Smith. And we got it's kind of a pebbly surface that was very difficult to get flat enough to feel comfortable putting varnish on. I, I just, I, they're my exclusive supplier, and uh, my salesperson keeps trying to sell me that stuff. And I finally the other day said, "Listen, it's garbage. Send it back to your design people." Buy a kit of CPES from Smiths and make that. Um, and we use the the cold formula. The CPES uh, you you buy it and the outfits in uh, West Mystic, Massachusetts. And uh, the owner, the last time I ordered, said, "Have you ever tried the cold formula?" I said, it's not cold in the shop. Right. He said, no. What this is about is the warm formula gasses off very quickly because it's presuming it's in a 75 to an up ambient temperature environment. For what you're doing, the cold will actually penetrate further, will cure more quickly, and I think you'll like it because you can put on thinner coats. Um, so it's the same price. It might as well make your supplier feel like, you know, he, he's just giving you great. Well, guess How what? How many coats you have? Four. I mean, something like a, a so big. It gets, it gets its own gloss after a while. It actually gets a little bit glossy. Okay. In other words, if you look across the light, there'll be a nice reflection. Um, but this, this deck now has four. Five? Right. And if we had only done three coats of CPS before that varnish, it wouldn't be nearly that flat. Do you guys all wear full respirators when you're working with CPS? <laughs> oh. No? Yes, no. We, we run <laughs> we run we run this. Yeah. We have a big OSHA approved yeah. exhaust fan out there. We open that window in the dead of winter, um, or if the wind's blowing out of the north, we open the big door a little bit. So you do need the cold version. 
<laughs> yes. So does anybody want to take a shot? We got some extra wood. The Woodcoat brand and the Lowboat brand are exactly the same material. It's just that this has been mixed to colors. So this is the same, the same stuff. It's the same stuff. Is this only available through the Lake Oswego boat? Yes, and it's. Let's say he doesn't give it away, but he's on a, he's on an extremely small scale. How much is it in court? The uh, Lake Oswego gel stain is more expensive, but it also covers 1,100 to 1,500 square feet per, per gallon. So it's probably on a volume basis cheaper than Interlux Interstate. Uh, to do a boat is 19 to 20 feet. Court would do it, of stain? I, I'm always a, a risk-averse guy. I always order two, but I think one will do it. I, you know, to do a 21-foot boat with um, you know, solid kind of stain, one quart does it. Yep. Sure. Easily. Have you ever looked at the chemical makeup? Yes, I have. We've had that conversation. That brings in fresh air from the outside. It's a little box, and you get these disposable Kevlar goods. I I and they were six grand a pot. Oh, no, 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 no. I bought it for him to thank him for what he did. Allowing me to go work for him. We have two different Email me, bro. Yeah, well, I can email you the name. Okay. I mean, I had one before, which was great. But, but this one is more based on fans. I was just that's the thing I want. Yeah. 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 Compressor yeah. So where is he getting his hair? Outside. What color is it? Seventy-five feet away. Put it out. You put. You throw it. Yeah. I'd love, I'd, we would use it. I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah, I think that's really good. That's yeah. so nice. Because it has this nice cool air over here. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I mean, there's a big He's always got a face you don't build a new Right. Oh, yeah, I just got through doing the engine box. I wish I had this information before I did that. <laughs> well, that's why we wanted to do this workshop. We figured this stuff is a boon to all of us. No, I like the, I like the way it takes the color. Right close to the silver. I'll find that. That guy gets a man. Oh, I'd love to hear about him. Yeah. Yeah, you just see him. 
So, we've got everybody staining. We want to have a special thanks to Mike Mayer, Low Boat Boat Company, for sharing uh, samples of his stain and quarts of his stain with us for the purpose of this workshop. I think Mike is onto something. The handout we've prepared will, uh, I think, give you all the information you need to make contact with him. Woodcoat is online. The handout we put together for Woodcoat uh, leads you to uh, its website. And it's changed the way we preserve boats. I'm suspecting it might change the way you preserve boats as well. So, thank you so much. On February 2, 2019, Groundhog Day. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.